Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me for another day text. We meet every weekday morning and Saturday morning between 6.30. I'm sorry, between 5.30 and 6.30. It's almost 6.30. But I keep that range of time open because sometimes with the daylight and the lighting, it makes it sometimes difficult for me to gauge when is the best time to do the video. So in any case, we do our best to meet regularly, Monday through Friday and Saturday, 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And what we do when we meet is consider a portion of the biblical record, the letters and documents that are contained in the Bible as part of the collection of histories and letters and documents that involve the God Jah and others who served him, as well as Jesus Christ, the one we believe is the biblical Messiah. So our goal is to increase our knowledge and understanding of these biblical texts, as well as other related texts and histories, so that we can better understand our war past and then apply the things we learn to the present. Good morning. So we're working our way through 1 John. We're in chapter 3. We're just going to consider three verses today. But as usual, just one or two verses contain enough for us to, to discuss the things of importance. So I believe you'll see that's the case today in 1 John 3. Verses 1 through 3. Let's take a look. Starting in verse 1, John writes, Do you see what type of love the Father has given us, that we have been called children of God? And that is who we are. On account of this, the world does not know us because it did not come to know Him. That's why often people look at us... <laughs> even other Christians or so-called Christians, and they just, they don't get what we're doing or what we're about um, in terms of our focus on Jah, Jesus, and treating us the way we want to be treated. Primarily non-Christians, of course, because most other Christian uh, groups or people can relate to some of the things we do and why, even if they disagree. But people of the world or who don't follow the Father or Jesus to, to them, we seem, you know, weird, maybe even retarded. <laughs> Sometimes they call us insane. They like to say that. When, of course, all you have to do is look at their life. <laughs> and it's not hard to see who's the insane person. And, or just look at people's beliefs, right? I mean, we have beliefs based on reasons that we can show you. Most other people who are non-Christian, <laughs> I mean, they'll try to point out some things about you know, what they think science shows as far as evolution and stuff, which is not correct. But it's not like um, they have uh, an awareness of the things that motivate us to do the things that we do. So when they see us in these ways and with these beliefs and talking the way we do, they don't get it. It, it just seems really odd to them. And yet it seems so obvious to us. So that's why you have to be convinced. Do not let other people influence you unnecessarily, especially if they have lack of faith. Right? Their lack of faith may not be based on anything that is of, of equal importance in terms of evidence for the reasons we have for the things we believe. So just because someone doesn't believe or doubts or doesn't know the Father or the Son, we do. So we shouldn't expect them to, to really get it entirely. Most people kind of know the history of the world and the religious elements that um, in, are involved with uh, Judaism and Christianity. So it's not like our, our beliefs or practices are totally unknown. They don't understand the depth of our commitment, the knowing, the deep level of knowing that we have through our study and prayer and association and our presentation of evidence which shows the things that have taken place. So our knowing is based on those things. Their knowing is not. It's not based on any of those things usually. Or if it is, maybe they just believed to a certain point and then stopped and now they don't. So to us, to, to them, we seem odd because... Why haven't we figured it out, right? <laughs> a 
well, we think we have figured it out. So you're you're going to have this this ongoing um, interplay between believers and non-believers all the way to the end of your life or to the end of this world. So don't let it surprise you and don't let it stymie you. We are children of God. So we know our Father. They don't. We want them to. We're trying to help people learn, but not everybody wants to. And they can learn just as easily as we can if they choose. So don't get worried if people choose not to learn more about our beliefs or the Father. They can do that if they want to. But sometimes we get concerned when other people don't because we we believe it's so important that they should. You have to let that go, though, because not everybody's going to come to the same knowledge that you do. Verse 2, dearly loved ones, now we are children of God and it has not yet been shown to us what we will be. So John hasn't, it doesn't appear to me he has received the revelation at this point, obviously, because in the, in the book of Revelation, which we're going to get to soon, there are visions of the resurrected Jesus that, while it may not still be quite what John is talking about here, the full manifestation and reality of the Christ in the spirit body that he exists in. And so John saw that in a vision, a series of visions. So to the ex- to what extent those visions accurately represent his real his real form, the form that that will be made manifest according to verse 2. We'll we'll just have to wait and see, right? So we do have those descriptions in Revelation that give us some indication of the glory that Jesus has as a spirit in heaven with his father. So so John appears to have been writing this before he received the revelation. And therefore, um, he's telling them to have confidence that they're going to be just like him. And so while they may not have, John may not yet have seen him, Jesus, in terms of the visions and the the celestial type glory that that is described in those visions they knew even paul wrote that jesus had a spiritual body was raised as a life-giving spirit same with peter the death in the flesh made alive in the spirit and so they all knew that there was this manifestation coming or pending with his coming and that eventually they would all be like him however it is that he exists as a spirit being in heaven. And so he um, he says that we have come to know that if ever he is revealed, verse 2, we will be like him, since we will see him just as he is. And so that that's a real, actual viewing, either heavenly or physical, in the sense of New Jerusalem coming down to heaven, uh, to earth, in the New heavens and new earth, which John also writes about in Revelation uh, 21. So all of these things are consistently presented to us in the scriptures and in the biblical writers. And so when we read them, we can cross-reference and get um, supporting testimony and verification, at least of what they thought and taught. Verse 3, each person having this hope about him makes himself clean, just as that one is clean. And so remember, we're talking, John opened up this letter, 1 John chapter 1, by telling us, if we say we have no sin, we're a liar. So this has nothing to do with trying to expect more of yourself than is possible. What we're supposed to do is confess our sins to the one who can forgive us and work on bettering ourselves so that we can be more like him. Not just when he's made fully manifest, but now. Because we have a writing sample. We have a writing sample in the New Testament, the accounts of Jesus' life and teachings, which show us the things he did, show us his concerns and interest for the Father and glorifying his name, and doing the things that he was sent to do. Same with us. He sent us forward. Baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And to teach them the things that we were taught. So that they then could become witnesses of these same things. And proclaim Jah's name 
and coming kingdom. That's how we make ourselves clean. By acknowledging our mistakes and sins, confessing them to Jah through Jesus, moving forward, doing things better, never giving up, and forgiving others when they do the same things. Otherwise, you're not going to be given the forgiveness that you seek. So we have to keep these things in mind so we don't become hypocritical. We don't become down on ourselves unnecessarily and quit or give up. No, we have enough information and evidence to be witnesses at all times if we choose to. We just try to pick the right time, the right people, so that we can make the most impact and not just speak without any purpose. We try to take advantage of the right opportunities, or at least we should. But you can always feel free to give a witness if that's what you choose and that's what the circumstances call for. Each person having this hope makes himself clean and in proclaiming Jah's name and coming kingdom, that's what you do, as well as confessing your sins and, and be trying to become a better person. We're children of God. We are sons and daughters of Jah. Of course, it's not a gender thing. I just say that because we're female and male now. <laughs> but, so when you, if you're a female now, I'm referring to you as a daughter of Jah in the sense that eventually we'll all be sons of God in the way that the spirits are sons of God. And so, with that in mind, we don't really, we should not worry as much as we might worry if we didn't feel we had that association with God and with Christ. Groups like the Watchtower and others, for whatever good they may do, they definitely fail here, right? They definitely fail to connect people with the Father as children of God because they believe only a select group can actually be designated as such. So I'm not here to, to really get into that issue with them. I'm just pointing out that they don't have that belief. And it, it doesn't, it's not something that a lot of, of witnesses, Watchtower witnesses, can draw upon the way we can. They could if they believed it. We do, is my point. And I bring it up relative to the Watchtower because many of us who have been associated with the Watchtower know, or at one time were taught, that being a child of God or a son of God in the sense that the Bible describes it is reserved for the 144,000. Um, but that's not what the Bible teaches anywhere. So let them have it. Um, this isn't about getting involved in their ways unless you are brought into that circumstance. This is about proclaiming the Father and the Son and ourselves as children of God so that we should go forward and treat others the way we want to be treated, forgiving people for their mistakes, receiving forgiveness for our mistakes, and doing everything we can to praise the Father, to give glory to Jah through the Son by doing the things that he did and taught. So, we know our mission. We know our purpose. We're not confused in those ways. Um, now, some things come up. So there's a question here. Is baptism important? Some say it's not. Well, you're never going to find those words in the Bible. Baptism is not important. <laughs> in fact, you'll find probably just the opposite in the sense that it's, uh, it's done and promoted repeatedly. Um, but if So if you can be baptized, if you have a body of water there that would be usable to show your dedication and symbolize your repentance toward Jah through Jesus, then you should be baptized, right? That's what we're called to do. Um, no, we shouldn't. Well, I mean, can you? if you can get baptized, you should. If you can't get baptized, well, what, what are we supposed to do? Let's say someone's in prison. They're in jail and they convert, but there's no body of water. Well, we're... <laughs> So remember, we serve a reasonable God and a reasonable Messiah who explained to the hypocritical Pharisees and Sadducees the things that they uh, <laughs> did, did um, exceedingly wrong by going too far and not understanding the spirit of the text. Baptism is meant to show your dedication to Jah through Jesus and your repentance of sins. So why wouldn't you want to do that? Well, if you can't do it, well, of course, then you can't do it. There's not a body of water for you to do it in, <laughs> in which to do it. So let's uh, keep that in mind. If people want to insist on things, remember, we have three things that we insist on. Jah is the true God, the Father. Jesus is the biblical Messiah, 
sent by the Father. We treat others the way we want to be treated. I don't see insisting on baptism when you can't be baptized, i.e. it's not physically or lo locally possible. I don't see how that would fit into any one of those three. So um, the position of the texts and that I teach is that if you can get baptized, you should get baptized. Why wouldn't you? If you can't get baptized, well, <laughs> why are we asking the question, right? You can't. But that doesn't change the condition you have in your heart and that when you can, you would eventually show that so people know. Why wouldn't you want to have people know that? That's an outstanding way to declare yourself as a dedicated Christian. In addition to the things you say and teach and how you act. So, you should get baptized if you can. And if you can't, well, I mean, that kind of answers the question, right? So, <laughs> Keep that in mind. Don't let other people deceive you or fool you or insist on things. The Bible does not insist for you. Plenty of people out there, you give them a chance, they will run your life. And most often, they'll run it right into the ground <laughs> and then take everything you leave behind. So try to pick your friends and associates wisely. Limit the amount of people that you get a lot of information from unless you're just benefiting from everybody. But if you're getting confusing views and all these different people insisting on this and that, well, I mean, do what you want. But the whole goal of the Christian Witnesses of Jah is to simplify all that. And even though we do have to deal with people who make insistences upon us or who engage us in some ways, do your best to move around and pass them. Say what you got to say. Get back to the three things. Insist on those and give your good reasons for doing so. So I thank all of you for joining me. We'll uh, continue through the letter of 1 John. My cats are trying to get in. <laughs> we'll continue through the letter of 1 John uh, tomorrow. Unless something comes up, I'll put a notice. I've got some other things pending. I'm a little bit behind on some of my videos, but then I've been getting some other videos done, like, you know, Open Session 5 and CW Jaw Talk, or uh, rather the Sodomy Talk. <laughs> now, I should say that um, I had Open Session 3 offline for a while because I, I had to edit a part that didn't come out right. I'm going to put Open Session 3 back up today. So be looking for that uh, if you've been looking through the Open Session videos and wondering where's Open Session 3. It's, it's going to be coming back later today. So... Keep those things in mind. Thank you all for joining me. I enjoy getting our day started this way. We'll be back tomorrow for another day text in the letter of 1 John.